great. Look how perfect your skin is after you've massaged with sesame oil and sesame seeds. Oh, and that's one no wonder, you know, when they said open sesame, they scattered the seeds and all the things were revealed, you know, secret passages were revealed. Back to uh, presenting mode there. I'm just having fun. I know you're having fun. But it was so nice, really I want good, to but use it, it to but me. I'd rather you tell it All right, us. okay. So scattering the sesame seeds before you went anywhere and you were led into amazing chambers, <laughs> rooms. I have no idea. Right, enough of this. Right, <laughs> we all do. Somebody ought to be taping this for outtakes, you know. Oh, the Queen said, she had a little handbag on and she said, My dear, you're always so busy. Yes, I said, but I'd rather wear out ma'am than rust to death. And there's this little blank look in her face. What does she mean? It was not meant to be insulting, it was just like, you know, I'd rather wear out than rust to death. Pretty cute, really. <laughs> I don't ever want to be shaped into, you know, being the person who founded the body shop or the person who was, you know, um, a, a, a good retailer because my identity isn't that. That's what gave me the income to do the things I really want to do. My belief is I came out of the womb as an activist and I go to my death as an activist, standing up for things I believed in. That's what makes me feel alive. Being a retailer doesn't make me feel alive. It's just skills attached to selling a product. But being an activist, I love it. I'm not cynical about the government or politicians. I just know they're career politicians. They have an agenda, and the agenda isn't representing people. So, you know, instead of saying uh, that I'm cynical about it or making jokes about it, I just try and sabotage it, which is what I've been doing all my life. It's hard in many cases when you're a pioneer, when you put your head above the parapet. But I just love being on the side of the angels. <laughs> For me, it makes me feel alive. I'm outraged by the system being able to protest. When you grow up and you feel an outsider, you don't dance to the same drumbeat as anybody else. And if you're an immigrant, as we were, the only Italian immigrants in the town, Littlehampton, things are different. We were loud, we smelt of garlic. We had a mother who used to throw buckets of water at the priest, squashed garlic on our clothes and frog marched us into the church because she hated the priest and wanted to stink of the place with garlic. So from a very early age, I knew about sabotage. And if you had the same sort of really amazing teachers that I had, like Sister Immaculate Conception, who were teaching her kids how to look after the knights of the road, you know, the tramps, and, and you were measured by that consistently. When you're 10 years old and you see the very first printed booklet of the Holocaust, and that sort of kick-started me. So protesting, being on the street, I thought was really sexy and cool and uh, got caught into that at a very early age. The very first protest I ever went on was to demand that we had a safe place for roller skating. And I went and talked to our local MP, that was about 12 years old. Then there was this outrage in, um, when I was in my early 20s of all the public, all the police houses and all the naval houses, because we had a big naval depot in Littlehampton, which were empty and they should have been filled, I thought, with homeless people. But aren't you satisfied with this answer? No, of course I'm not satisfied. There are still 18 empty houses, and until they're all occupied either by police families or by anybody in the community who's paying rates, then they should be filled. For me in the body shop, I wanted to be able to be a voice, uh, a delivery system for the voice of some of the best campaigns out there and just say, hey, here's a resource, here are these shops. In those days, hundreds of shops around England and around the world. Groups like Greenpeace and Amnesty gave us a moral education. They gave us education that the Chamber of Commerce would never do, that Fortune Forbes magazines, those investment magazines, those icons to business would never do. So they, they told us a reality. So the thought leaders were like the forerunners of the planet. They were telling us things about the earth, about the resources, about human rights that no other institution was telling us. And gathering that information, we were able to shape our company, the body shop, into a way that was as near 
as possible to the Quaker form of running a business, which has to have a, a social agenda, not just a profitable agenda. But you clean up your own mess, that you're kind to your employees, that you're honest and honorable, you're transparent. And that type of thinking, uh, which we were formulating, I think was shaped and enormous by those groups like Amnesty and Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth. <laughs> I don't feel vindicated, I don't feel pissed off, I just feel, you know, I remember when I, you know, 30 years ago it was I wanted to save the world. Now you're so grateful for any approximate solution, any little thing, you know, so I'm not knocking anybody. I'm thinking, please God, do something. You know, I don't believe in this thing, I don't want to take corporate money. Because the recipients of the money, in many cases, the impoverished, don't give a damn where the money is coming. Just do something. Just do something. I don't care if it's greenwashing, whitewashing, just do something. I think as you get older, you, what you want is the affection of a group of people that understand what you're about and, and you interpret that affection not by smiles and you know, them crying in front of you or whatever, it's by saying, okay, how can we do what you want to do? How can we be an activist? How can we, how can we do things as well? So action to me is the measure of everything. <laughs>